Welcome to today's program. Uh, we're going to visit with Charles Starks, who's the president and CEO of the Nashville Music City Center. Uh, Nashville, what a city. I've been there many times. Uh, Charles, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, our pleasure. And so uh, certainly look forward to having you back in Nashville sometime soon. So, I, I definitely will end up there again. I've spent many, many hours walking downtown and doing things around Nashville. Uh, so what have you been up to, Charles? You've been golfing or anything or doing something with social distancing? Well, you know, f fortunately, golfing is one of the things that they uh, actually have encouraged that you can get out and do. And so with the, the lack of business we have right now, I actually have done a little golfing lately. I don't know my game has improved much, but uh, I certainly have a great time. And I had this whole garage full of golf balls. So I'm good for a while anyway. So uh, yeah, a little I, bit of that. But uh, but I, I still come into the – I'm at the office every day. We don't have many of our folks that are here every day. Most are working remotely. But uh, So in the office. But, yeah, getting a little bit of golf in. And uh, we're having another hot summer like most of the country is. So uh, Absolutely. You get it, try to get out there early if you're going to play golf right now. That's for sure. Yeah, I love golf, and I, I am known as someone who contributes many golf balls to the local courses. So. Yeah. yeah, I, I think, I think I some of the kids follow me around just picking mine up. Yeah, so. If I buy them, I, I, they know they're going to get them back. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, tell us about Nashville Music City Center, your facility. Uh, you yeah. got some big names that play there, or? Yeah, we're, you know, Jeff, we're, you know, when we were, were designing this building, we're, we're a little over seven years old. And so this was a new center that was built right in the heart of downtown that replaced a, an existing convention center we'd had that served our city very, very well for, you know, 25 plus years. And we just needed a bigger space. And so we were able to you know, come in, get some land and build this building downtown. And, and part of what we said was that we really want to be to be able to compete for a market that's, you know, kind of 80% of the marketplace of conventions and all. But then there's a number of things that were important to us. And, and, and so one was that we wanted something to set downtown that number one, didn't look like a big warehouse because these are big buildings. We're on a little bit over 16 acres of land. We wanted to be heavily engaged in the community. We wanted to be sustainable. Uh, we, we achieved LEED Gold uh, certification. So we're very proud of that and what we're able to do on the sustainability front. But the other thing we said is that instead of calling it the Nashville Convention Center, you know, our brand is Music City as for the city. And so that's why we named it Music City Center. And part of what we did is we've got a ballroom that's a little over 57,000 square feet. And then our exhibit hall, which is 353,000 feet. But we designed that acoustically so that we could do live music performances here. And we've been honored over the time. We've done a couple of award shows from here, live from here. Uh, and certainly with some of the talent that lives in Nashville, it's been really easy for conventions that have come in to hire some of them to perform for a, you know, for a reception or a dinner or a general session. And, and so we've been pretty honored. We've had some pretty big names through here that you don't, you know, you all, all convention centers see big keynote speakers sure. and all, but, but in the entertainment side, we've had some pretty big, uh, you know, not only just country acts of all, all genres. And so, uh, but we've got a magnificent ballroom to do that in. And so uh, we've, been, we've been pretty excited about that. So over the years. Yeah. It sounds like a quite a diverse center you have there. Um, and being Nashville, obviously we think music and performances. So, mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, you mentioned lead your, your program there, but let's talk about the GBAC star accreditation for facilities. I, I know you guys just obtained that. And tell us why you decided to look into this and, and pursue it. Well, I think for, for us, Jeff, it was, and, and as, as we talked about LEED, you know, so when we were building the building and getting open, we looked at, you know, as LEED as the standard to be able to tell our customers, our community, and our staff, we refer to as team members, that this is a commitment and we think this is a best practice. It's something that we should be doing. I will echo that's exactly what we think about GBAC and the STAR accreditation. So as we learn more about this and, and, and working through it, to, for us, for the staff, for our community, and certainly for our customers that are coming in, th this is the gold standard. And so we said, look, we need to be engaged in this. We want to certainly be able to do what we think are the best things we can do to take care of staff, community, and our customers. And so we thought that aligned certainly with what GBAC is doing. And so we're very honored in this last week to, to, to earn our star accreditation. And we think that sets the message, not only of what we've been doing the seven years we've been open, 
but what we'll do for many, many years into the future. So we look at that as another, uh, as something that, you know, it wasn't really, uh, it wasn't as much that, hey, we need to get this right now for today. We do need to do that. But we think this is something that's going to carry on for many, many years past this. And so we think we need to be a part of that. And that's a, a good good thing for us to share with, again, staff, community, and customers. So. Yeah, I'm sure your workers, your staff, and visitors will feel better coming there because of this. Uh, and, of course, DBAC Star Accreditation is now in more than 60 countries, so right. it, is, it is growing. Uh, tell us about the process of becoming accredited. Uh, what was maybe the most challenging aspect of it? Well, you know, I think, I think the most challenging is, is, you know, well, first, let me say in the process, no, number one, the, the GBAC team, has been phenomenal to work with. And, and our folks that have worked directly with them a lot. Uh, and, and so just kudos to the team at GVAC and all that they've done to help us along the way. They made the process extremely easier for someone like us getting into it. So I want to I thank them there. I think for us, probably one of the more challenging parts is that we started looking at it. And you know what? It's it, it, it happens to companies, I think, over time. And I, I used to be in the hotel business, and this is what happens to the hotel side, is you end up with a little bit of what I'd call chemical creep. All at once, you've got all these products and you're using things, and you're like, well, when did we buy that? I don't remember us having that. And so I think the challenging part for us was understanding what we were, what we had. Now, fortunately, we had a lot of chemicals we were using that are really good, that GBAC says this is what you should do. We had some other things that we said, how in the world did we get that and you know, where did it come from? So I think for us, probably the most challenging thing first was inventorying, understanding what we had, how we were using some of those in place to say, okay, this, this isn't what we should be doing. You know, some of these are great and we're doing the right thing, but now let's get the team together and then start working on our SOPs that's going to talk about how we do this going forward. And, and so I think that was probably the most challenging out of the gate was to realize that between we've got a big food and beverage operation uh, along with, you know, just the stuff that we're doing you know, around the facility and we're a little over 2 million square feet in total. So in that kind of a facility to say, okay, let's get all of that pulled together, understand what we have as we go through this accreditation process. So that, that was probably the biggest challenge for us internally. Okay. And on the other spectrum, what was the easiest part? Well, I think the easiest part was working with GVAC. And I think that as we got into conversation, and, and let me say, and, and you know, and I think one of the things that it, as you look at going through the process, which is, and, and for those folks that are working through it, it as you see, there, there's there's a lot of work to do and, and a lot of commitments you've got to make. And, and, and so I think the easy part for us was early on, we identified who was going to be our leader on this project, uh, who's our chief operating officer and dedicated a few folks to work with her. And that's literally what they've worked on for the last few months. Jointly, uh, our trade association, uh, International Association of Venue Managers, IEVM, uh, Lisa Putman, who goes by Putt, who's our chief operating officer, she got on the committee with IEVM that's working on GBAC. And so we were able to work not only with GBAC, but with some other buildings going through this. And I think that made it extremely easy and you know, a lot of good idea sharing as we work through. So I'd encourage anyone that's looking at this is find some folks that have been through it or that are starting down that road that you can kind of partner with and understand and kind of learn together as you go through it. Yeah, collaboration does help. I've heard that many times from others I've talked to about the program. What's something that you folks do now that you didn't do before that you're going to continue doing moving well, past I, the pandemic? Yeah, well, I, I think certainly uh, some of the things that we've brought into the building that we're going to continue doing afterwards, probably the one that's the, the most exciting, I think, that I, that I can understand, sometimes I'm not the guy that understands all of it, is, is what we're going to do around the ATP testing so that we can go in, swab an area and look at it and really see in real time, here's how good of a job we're doing at killing whatever's there uh, as we disinfect areas and is going to teach us the better way, you know, how, what, what do we need to improve in our process is, is that we move forward. You know, where are we missing something along the way? So I think that's something that's gonna kind of be a bit of a report card for us that we can do on a constant basis in real time and say, look, here, here's something that now we know, and so here's a training issue we've got to work on, or here's something we're doing really, really well, and, and let's share that. So I, 
I think that's going to be because to me, what we're going to do as we continue to move forward, Jeff, is it's great to get started, certainly to be accredited and do this, but we got to continue to do this repetitively day after day after day. And, and so an hour after hour, we'll get groups in the building. And so the way you do that is sometimes, you know, it's uh, the old adage of you got to, you know, you got, you got to inspect what you in, expect. And so as we look at that, we think this is a way that we're going to be able to do that in real time and move forward. Certainly some of the other things that we've done, the electrostatic sprayers that we brought in, we're looking at a couple of other items like, you know, touchless elevator buttons. We've not done that yet, but we're in the middle of that looking right now. There's going to be some capital commitments there that uh, will serve us for many years to come. But I think the main thing is going to be is that we're going to become a way to, to disinfect our building where it is extremely safe, uh, for both our customers and our, our team members that are working in the building every day. And this becomes part of our way of life, just like sustainability did when we started LEAD back in, you know, seven years ago. What a fantastic plan you guys have. It's, it's refreshing to hear your, your vision. Uh, one final question. You're part of an association of venues. You mentioned that. Right. If, they were to, if some were to ask you, your peers were to ask you, should they go after GBACSR accreditation, what would be your comment? Well, I think they absolutely should. I mean, I, I don't know why you would not do that. I, I, as we talk to, and as, as you know, you've mentioned, it's internationally known. We, we, one of the things that we were able to do by moving to this larger facility is we have expanded the group mix that we're bringing into the building. And we have many, many more international attendees than we ever would have had before in our old convention center. And, and so as I look and talking to customers and I'm on the phone, I'm, I'm heavily involved in our sales activities and I'm on the phone every day with customers right now, especially right now, groups trying to decide what they're going to do and they're coming next spring. What should I be doing? And, and let me take one of our lead comments right now, after we get past, Hey, good morning. How are you? Is let us tell you about what we just got and what our, our accreditation is with GBAC. Let me tell you what that means to you and to our staff and what it's going to mean for the attendees when they arrive. So I cannot imagine that other venues, whether it be convention centers, hotels, certainly arenas and stadiums and performing arts centers, which are part of the IEVM family. Uh, it's going to be a, a way to share to your attendees or customers or patrons to be able to say, here's what we, how strongly we believe that we're going through this rigorous and the 20 steps that you go through. And we're doing that. And we're ready for you. And we want to have as safe an environment as possible. And I don't know why we wouldn't all be want to talk about that and, and doing that. I think it's really, I, I don't want to, I think it downgrades it a little bit to call as we would as some, some of us that are older would remember, but the good housekeeping seal. But I think in essence, this is a, the seal that's going to tell folks, hey, we're serious about this. We're taking safety of our attendees from, from this type of action just as, as much as are we're taking their physical safety around a facility this size would be. So I, I would I would encourage everyone. Uh, certainly we have been, there, there were a number of, of facilities that helped us and reached out and assisted us. We certainly want to pay it forward. We are more than happy to help anyone. Uh, got any questions or that we could be helpful for, we're happy to do that and share work that we've done. So uh, I, I think this is really our, our community of, convention centers, arena stadiums, performing arts and all with IVM is, is we're like, it's really a big happy family. I mean, we certainly compete against each other, but what we don't compete against is trying to, we want to make sure people are safe and taken care of. We all, we all want to do that. So that's nothing, that's not a competition there. It's about, we want to be the best in class and best in the industry. And we want buildings all over the world to be just as successful as we are in that. And we want to be the same as they are. So. Yeah, good story and great uh, experience that you're sharing with our audience today.